Hello everyone, Monty here, and today I'm going to talk about um, stress eating and keeping to your commitments. So, um, I've had a very bad couple of days. We had torrential rainstorms come through here in Florida, and this brand new house that I built, um, which I, normally I wouldn't talk about figures, but just, I mean, it would be upsetting about how much I spent. But I didn't buy a cheap house. This house was $803,000. I put another $100,000 into it after I closed. New bathroom batteries, custom office furniture, new toilets, um, you know, electric shades throughout the house, lighting fixtures, you name it, I've done it, okay? Custom walkways being lined in the flower. I, I could go on forever and ever and ever. Anyway, um, and right before I moved in, those who were following me probably remember I moved into an Airbnb because the builder missed four closing dates and I had to be out of my house. I gave myself a month from when I had to be out of my rental house until when I was gonna move into this house for the first date. And then as they missed dates, by the, by the third date, I had to go take an Airbnb. The last thing that took a month was that they put the wrong roof on my house and then they had to, because I live in a gated community, everything has to be the right color scheme. Plus I bought the contemporary house with a traditional roof they put on. So it didn't look right, so they had to change it, and they had to anyway for the homeowner's rules. And make a long story short, when I, when I was talking to someone else who was moving into the neighborhood, she goes, you know, I, hate to, I don't wanna be Nancy negative, but Monty, I, I hope they're gonna plug every hole, because when they take the old roof off with all the nails, they're probably just gonna reuse the same paper, and there's, they're probably gonna nail again, it'll be different holes where there isn't a nail anymore, and you're gonna have leaks. And I'm like, I kinda knew what she was saying made sense, but I didn't wanna believe it. Right, so I just um, I just put it in the back of my head, and then when this leak happened, that came back to me, and I said, "Oh my God, she's right." So I have three leaks. I got two leaks in my ceiling, and then everybody that has this model has a leak in the corner front room. And I've been smelling mold back there for a long time, but when I brought them through, they're like, "We don't smell anything." And you know, uh, anyway, um, they finally came through yesterday, and they smell it, and they said, "Everybody that has this model." All the stone outside has to come out. The drywall has to come out. Many people already had their drywall out and there's mold all in the walls. So I had a mold company come today to do some testing. I'm waiting for my results. Um, but I have two leaks, one in the dining room, one in the master bathroom. I, I smelled something funny like the first day it rained, like maybe Friday, and then Saturday it was really bad. And I was in the bathroom and I thought, well, maybe, you know, I had a smelly poop or something really bad. But then when I went in four hours later after I sprayed some air freshener and still smelled really bad, I took a step in the bathroom and I almost fell, I slid, and when I looked up, I saw the stain and there was a puddle, it was dripping. So, um, I don't know if it's total design floor, if this builder just hired a crappy roofer, or it's the whole thing with the nails, but I, I'm afraid that even with that whole scenario, if it was the nail, I'm gonna continue to have leaks in this roof, so I'm really, um, I'm really stressed out. So I started stress eating last night. Um, the first couple of days I was okay, and I wanna talk about keeping up to your commitment. So I always say, when you're going to be Really, it's easy for us to make excuses. Oh, it's COVID. Oh, I got a leak. Oh, I got, I got stress at work. It's easy to make excuses, right? But I say, look at the other side. If you can lose weight during COVID, during a stressful time like me having leaks, during, you know, me having stress, I'm at a very stress at work right now. I'm doing, working on a big new um, uh, business process mapping exercise where I'm doing calls all day long, very intense stuff with people trying to figure out each step in their process and how long is it taking. And I have to work all weekend because I got to do a big presentation on Tuesday. So I'm really stressed out. And I was making excuses as I went into my bedroom and I ate like a big bag of pistachio that was like 1500 calories and I was already over my calories for the day. So at the end of the day, I want to reinforce you guys. I always tell you, it's all about calories in, calories burned. At a, at a basis, and then there's things you want to watch and add to it, right? So that's a basis, but then you want to eat clean, you know, and you don't want to eat hardly any processed foods, and then now I've added in the low carbs, because as I get older, it gets harder to maintain the body. And I know people say, oh, you look great. But I want my washboard abs back. I want to take off my shirt and go, wow, like I did for the past six years. Now I posted a picture of me at 8% body fat like a week or two ago. You can go see it. I'm 11 and a half pounds away from that right now, or 10 and a half. Yeah, 11 and a half pounds right now. No, 10 and a half pounds away from that right now. And I believe I can get back there again. I, I don't, but people tell me, oh, you're 57. That's when you were 50, you know, six from 52 to 56 like that. And now that you're 57, you probably can't be there. And I say, bullshit, I can. If I put my mind to it, I, mind to it, I can get there. And I have to do things a little bit differently because I started doing exactly what I was doing before and that wasn't working. So I need to change it up a little bit. 
So um, what I want to talk about is your commitment. Now, you can really tell when you're committed to your weight loss regime is when you share it with people. So many times I've talked to people I was mentoring, I said, so have you posted your goal on Facebook or Instagram or have you told, oh no, I haven't done that. Well, why haven't you done that? Oh, because I'd be embarrassed if I don't succeed. I'm saying exactly why you want to do it because that fear of embarrassment will stop you from going off program. So how it worked for me is as I was eating these pistachios in my bedroom, even though, let me talk about that for a minute. So when I comfort eat, it's not bad food. I have no interest in sugar. I don't eat fried foods. I don't eat artificial sweeteners. I do not crave anything bad whatsoever, ever. I just cream. I just eat too many calories. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how clean you're eating or how low carb you're eating. At the end of the day, if you still eat too many calories, you're gonna gain weight. So I talk all the time about this technique called the Tony Robbins leverage technique. It's also known as the pain and pleasure principle. Go to YouTube, put it in the search bar, Tony Robbins pleasure, uh, pleasure, pain, <laughs> Pain and pleasure technique, or even easier, Tony Robbins. Um, oh my God. Now I just totally forgot the name of it. So, um, anyway, it's all about. I forgot, I'm, like, I'm, not, I'm like totally not with it today. I've had such a long day. But anyway, uh, leverage technique. Tony Robbins leverage technique. My brain freezes sometimes. Uh, the Tony Robbins leverage technique. And watch the video, it'll change your life. There's a short one that's like 15 minutes, and there's one that's like 40 minutes, whichever one you, you're at. But most of you probably will watch the 15, that's good enough. But it's all about talking to yourself and making, go running over in your head all the reasons why you don't want to eat, you know, if it's eating, let's say. You can use it for anything, but if, you don't, if it's about weight loss, all the reasons why you don't want to eat that food that you're thinking about eating, right? Like me with the pistachios, I wish I would have had that conversation a little earlier. But finally, when I finished the bag and I read that it's 1,500 calories, I was like, oh my crap, I probably ate 1,800 calories over my calories today, I almost double what I'm supposed to have. I gotta stop this, right? And I probably would have gone on eating if I didn't have that conversation. And the things I ran over my head is, oh, but you put on, you're weighing yourself every week and you're posting that every week. It's going to be so embarrassing that your followers are going to see you didn't gain weight this week and they don't have to make excuses why I didn't lose the weight because I'm telling them about the leaks in my, in my little roof and blah, 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 blah. And they, they, it's like the peanuts. It's all excuses, right? And so today, again, when I got done with work, I had, what, five? one hour, the last one was one and a half interviews with people to try to get information. I had like one break for an hour and one break for a half hour. That was it from early this morning all the way until six o'clock this night. It's me talking the whole time, trying to pull information out of people. It was so exhausting. So I wasn't going to work out. And then I used the leverage technique. Well, money, you already took two days off this week. You know, you only like to take one day off a week. That's when you've been the most successful. And you know, you get away yourself on Saturday or Sunday and post your, your, um, your uh, weight and you're already screwed up one day. Let's talk about that for a second. I've found that in counting your calories, you can, you can have one day that you screw up and you still can pull the week out. If you just stay the same weight, that's a, that's a success. If you still lose a little weight, having one day totally screwing up, that's a huge success. And I have found over the years that I have been able to do it constantly, right? But if it's two days, can't pull it out. Usually two, three days, forget about it. You're done. You're probably going to gain weight that week. So when I was thinking about not working out this evening, I ran away, oh, Monty, you want to work it? It's that talking to yourself and making the long list of why you should or shouldn't do something. So, you know, last night I stopped myself eating why I shouldn't eat anymore. And today it was why I should work out to try to recoup the week and that I couldn't take off any time this week and I had to work out really hard every day until Saturday or Sunday when I weigh myself because... I want to be successful this week. So um, the moral of the story is we always have stress. I've got, it happens to everything happens at the same time. The biggest stress of what week of the work that I've had in months. I got this big thing due Tuesday um, and all my workshops are, are spread out over this week. Um, I've got the leaks in the house. I'm trying to coordinate getting that fixed. Um, I had um, the lot that, oh my God, all the stuff that's happening. My lawn company dumped all this fertilizer into my pool and stained the whole bottom of my pool and I spent a thousand dollars having the pool cleaned and drained and then 500 in water to get it refilled and the stains are still there and I'm trying to get the company to come back and fix that. And then my dog was in the vet yesterday because ever since the, the, the leak started he's been shaking and trembling and I think I have mold and I think it's affecting him. And that thousand dollars vet bills, 900 and something to be exact. Um, ultrasound, Chang, it's not sushi, Chang, I had uh, ultrasound, x-rays, blood work, 
and he was there all day for observation. So, um, and he had chest x-rays, lower abdomen x-rays, it was a stool sample, they couldn't find anything wrong with him, and I asked him if Mold could do it, because he was coughing a little too, and I've been coughing, he said yes. That's why I thought I had corona, because I was exposed to my neighbor whose mother had corona, and I didn't know that she, she was negative or positive. Believe it or not, she lives in the same house with her, and she tested negative 10 days later, taking care of her mother, thank God. And, um, but because I was coughing, and maybe I was coughing all these last couple of weeks because there's mold in the house. So I got a mold test today. Also, the mold people came while I was doing one of my things. They took the samples in the air, and I should know tomorrow if I have mold or not. And I'm bringing the dogs tomorrow to the dog sitter for a week to see if Chang gets any better because he's shaking, he's panting, he's like acting very strange. I don't know what's wrong with him, and he can't find anything wrong with him. So the moral to the story is don't make excuses. I know we're all stressed out with Corona. There may be another lockdown. You know, I, I shouldn't watch the news, and the news has been stressing me out. I'm so worried there are gonna be riots. I'm so worried is Donald Trump gonna try and do a coup? What is he doing? I heard this is million, oh yeah, and there's this million man Donald Trump march coming up. Please do not engage with these crazy Trump people. They are crazy, okay? Just stay away from them. Let them all, maybe the herd will thin out. Maybe the herd will thin out. You know, I'm gonna talk like Donald Trump. Get them all together. Let them all talk to each other with no masks. And then, they will all give each other corona. It's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be gorgeous. <laughs> I feel like a divine, this divine something or other, all these people, and it's unfortunate, it's sad. I really don't wish anybody death, right? But these people are so stupid going to these Donald Trump rallies that have already proven 750 people died from them, and now they're gonna do a million mile march. Now, on the other side, don't be celebrating, the, I was not happy about the people celebrating uh, Biden all in the streets together, even with masks on, and some weren't wearing masks. Mass. So some, some Democrats were being really, or Biden supporters were being really stupid, too, on both sides. But um, anyway, please don't engage with the Trump supporters if they protest. These people are crazy. We just gotta wait until Biden's in office and make sure, and then we know that these people will have um, consequences for their actions. Right now, it doesn't look like there's a lot of consequences for them, right? But there will be, right? So um, anyway, um, that's what's going on. I just wanna let you know that A, stress eating is normal, but you have to talk to yourself because who wants to be normal? I always say, you wanna, be, what's normal in this country is 70% of us are overweight and obese. I never want to be normal. I always want to be the best I possibly can be, and I strive for that every single day. And believe me, I always say I'm perfectly imperfect. I'm going to screw up. Lord knows I do. I say things I wish I didn't say. I'm probably going to be doing that to the day I die. But every day I try to learn from my mistakes, and I try to be better. And um, But I always want to be my best. I don't want to be like the herd. I won't be like everybody else. Everybody else goes to stress eating and goes, oh, but, yeah, let's get a pizza and a beer. We're all upset. Or... Let's bury ourselves in a gallon of ice cream. What good is that gonna do? All it's gonna do is make you wanna beat yourself up more. When you finish it, you got a stomach, oh, I feel sick and I'm gonna get so fat and all that negativity in your head. You wanna be proud of yourself. Think about how proud of yourself you're gonna be, you are gonna be if you say, I got into the best shape of my life during Corona. I had this quarantine time and I made the best of myself. And use that leverage technique to talk to yourself and realize that even if you do have a bad day, because we're perfectly imperfect, we're always gonna, nobody is perfect. Nothing in life is perfect, nothing. But, okay, so one day, chalk it up to, okay, you can still pull the week out, uh, and you could, it, what, the first thing that could, probably could happen is you, maybe just you stay the same, which to me is a win, or even better, you still lose a little weight because you only screwed up that one day and you were great the rest of the week. So if you screw up, say, okay, I can still pull this out the rest of the week and focus on that. You could ex maybe extra exercise, maybe a little less calories, and you can pull it out. And then again, don't forget to make your commitments. Share your goals with a friend. Write it down. Look at it. Use an app. You're tracking it. Look at it every day in the app. What you're doing, what you're eating, you know, and, and reinforcing positive that, hey, I ate under my calories today. I'll talk about the low carbs in the next chat. I'll talk about carb cycling because um, I think it's really working for me. I feel so much better. I'm not having a hard time with this. I'm really surprised how easy this low carbs has been. Um, I am eating a lot, of, a lot more red meat, which I was trying to get away from, so I wait to see what my cholesterol is when I do it in six months. But so far, it's been pretty good. Anyway, I'm out of time. Hope you enjoyed this chat, and I'll be talking to you tomorrow.